gears. This is a good gear switch. We've been involved in very complex, heavy issues of late. So heavy, it almost feels like lead, right, everybody? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like lead in our bones. Um, so we are really excited to hear from this group, and this is proficiency-based uh, learning. And um, who do we have a person who's a spokesman first? You are. Okay. Yeah. The real spokespeople are here. Okay, but great. I well, for the record, could you introduce yourself? So yeah. I'm Helen Beatty. I'm the executive director and founder of Up for Learning. And I'm thrilled that you got to hear a bit about our organization from Lindsay, I think, right at the start of the session. So mm -hmm. have a context for our organization. Um, I guess at the heart of what we do and what we believe is that young people must be central both to learning and school change. They must be active players for us to do it right. Um, and their unique perspective um, and their involvement uh, has been instrumental in many Vermont schools as they have taken a role of agents of change around the, the agenda, the state agenda, including proficiency-based learning. There's definitely a sense of a narrative out there um, of, I think, um, for some a weariness or um, a questioning of the agenda of proficiencies. We come in here strong um, with a belief that they are absolutely central to being able to serve children as they deserve to be served. And their stories, I think, will bear witness to that, um, both to the rightness of proficiency-based learning and also its messiness. Um, but also that at the same time, um, another um, piece of it is evidence of the capacity of young people to be drivers of change. So without further ado, we have Kiana and Natalie from BFA Fairfax and Aiden from People's Academy. So we thought they would share their stories, then open it up for questions, and we should be just about done by then. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Um, I'm Kiana Labor and I'm a junior at BFA Fairfax. And I'm Natalie Bates, and I'm also a junior at BFA Fairfax. Um, when we first came into high school two years ago, our school was just starting out with proficiencies, and it was definitely a scary process for us. We're in the class of 2020, so as of right now, we're the first class that's supposed to graduate with proficiencies. Um, and we got on board pretty early freshman year. Our advisor um, mentioned a program called M3, and it was really about students being advocates for change and how to change the school community. So we got on board with that, and through that, we've kind of had a journey, sophomore and freshman, sophomore, and now junior year, about being advocates not only for proficiencies, um, but just for student voice in a school community in general. Yeah, and so our um, freshman year, we started off, um, it was a big change going from like the standard grading system to proficiency, so that was really kind of our like, um, grounding year so we started off um, still getting the standard grading system with like percentages and the A through F system and we just kind of got proficiencies that were correlated with those numbers and grades and that kind of went on throughout all of our freshman year and then moving to um, sophomore year we started moving towards the I to E or the one through four system and so um, that's how and at juniors now we get the I through E um, sophomore year is when we started a program called Youth and Adults Transforming Schools Together, and that has been the biggest driver of change for me personally, and for also Natalie. Um, we, through Youth and Adults Transforming Schools Together, we became student advocates for our proficiency-based graduation requirements committee. So we sat on the committee with um, other faculty members and our principal, and we were able to give a student perspective, which I just feel is so important for students to be involved in these decisions, and I personally feel like it's important to be involved in these decisions because they're being made about me and my learning. So so um, being involved has always been really important. Natalie and I also went to a conference out in San Francisco um, through edu Education Reimagined last year. And we that was really eye-opening for me because one of the big focuses was about how not every student is a traditional learner expected to sit in the classroom from 8 to 3 or 8 to 2.30 and kind of learn the same way. That's just not realistic anymore. Um, so I do feel like proficiencies that we've seen in our school have been more flexible and allowed students to kind of change their learning. I have the opportunity right now, I was able to work in a kindergarten class for six months this fall, and that was through proficiencies I was able to do that because I was able to pick, okay, what skills am I gaining from this? What skills is gonna help my learning? And it kind of furthered um, my goal for maybe potentially working in education in the future. So that was something that was really special that maybe I wouldn't have gotten a traditional grading system where I would have been expected to sit in an English class or a math class for that hour of my day. 
And going back to the PBGR committee that we were on, our goal of that committee was just kind of to sit down with a bunch of students or teachers and administrators and just talk about the problems that we were facing within our school. Um, the transition to proficiencies was one of the like biggest changes we had. So a lot of it was like, what do you need to graduate? Or how are people going to participate in sports? And what is this going to look like for homework and stuff? So that was kind of our, um, our big idea. Right now, uh, we get the like one through four that correlates with I through E. And um, yeah. those numbers are getting averaged at the end. So like our um, minimum to graduate is a 2.6, which is an average of everything. And that's what our school is saying proficient is at this point. Yeah. Um, our goal on the PBGR committee so far has just really been advocates for students and kind of how do we close that gap between what students need and what students want for, from proficiencies to what faculty and the expectations are. And we believe that through proficiency-based learning we can close that gap and of what students need and being able to advocate for themselves. And maybe like what Natalie and I right now, our role is to make sure that we're advocating for our peers and what are we hearing at the classrooms, what are we hearing our friends say. But our goal is for every student to have that opportunity to give feedback and we feel that that doesn't happen in the traditional grading system and with proficiency-based learning that, that can, students will be able to advocate for themselves is our main goal. Yeah, and we've been, we have very clear voices and opinions about it and so we have um, friends and peers that will come up to us and be like, oh, this is what I don't like about proficiencies or this is what I hope to change and right now our role is to just kind of help like voice their opinions and we're hoping that through all of our work that everyone is going to feel comfortable enough and know enough about proficiencies to like stand up and be like, this is what this means. I have a couple, just a couple of questions for you. How, did you, how are your parents doing with it? <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's always that's us. A lot. <laughs> My parents are definitely more open to it just because I've done a lot of with the proficiencies with different upper learning programs and also I've worked really closely with our faculty at our own school and our principal. So because I have um, a lot of knowledge about proficiencies, or very early on my freshman and sophomore year, I was able to explain it to my parents and the same with Natalie. And then this year, our focus has kind of been like, how are parents reacting to proficiencies? Do they understand proficiencies? And our principal just recently sent home a letter with like the most frequently asked questions that he gets every day from students and teachers. And he individually answered each of those questions. So I feel like that kind of helped parents too. And I think our biggest thing right now is looking forward to like college in the future and having uh, all these questions about what is that going to look like and what are our transcripts going to look like and how are colleges going to react to that. So I think that's that's where my parents are like the most nervous about all of this is the steps moving forward into the... Are you uh, both seniors, did you say? We're juniors. You're both juniors, so you haven't started the college. Not yet. You're not no. deeply into that right. yet. Yeah. Are, you, are you considering going on to school? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have anybody ahead of you that's... Uh, they did, they did, no, we're, we're, we're you're, the you're, the first, you're the first to be graduating with proficiency based. I yeah. see yeah. someone that might have yeah, a yeah, actually, actually take that. that. Um, yes. So yeah, so I'm a senior. Could you um, tell, set your name for the record? My name is Aiden Lodge. Um, and yeah, so I'm a senior in high school. Um, I am currently making decisions about where I'm going to college. Um, and I think that I honestly have one of the most awkward transcripts that can exist out there. I have one which is half one through 100 and half proficiency based. <laughs> And it hasn't been a problem whatsoever with admissions offices. Um, I think it actually encourages admissions offices to look at a student more holistically. So um, to really look at what a successful student looks like. So I can say, um, yeah, I haven't had any troubles in the fall. I'm looking at actually going to what was my, my REACH school. Um, and I feel very confident in proficiencies. I, yeah, it's all. So, you, so the colleges that you were dealing with didn't were comfortable. Yeah, they were you were fifty fifty. You you had a little little of both. So you yeah, had and I think that that's actually um, yeah. As I said earlier, I think that's kind of the most awkward <clears throat> combination. Yeah. That's yeah. So I think the transcripts. I mean, college admissions officers are getting um, are getting transcripts from all over the world, right? They're getting them with all kinds of different different ways of assessing student success. So I think that. Yeah, proficiencies aren't going to be something which they're going to struggle with and just throw into the corner. Like, I think they can handle it. <laughs> it's definitely reassuring for your students. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Other questions from the committee? Jay. Congratulations on your reach. Thank what you. was the school? Um, the Rhode Island School of Design. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 
Representative uh, Elder. Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for coming and, and speaking with us today. You were mentioning that you're in uh, kindergarten class for yes. some of your work, and it's reminded me that our, in, in my district uh, where I come from, in the Mount Abraham School District, they're, they've worked with proficiency starting in the high school, mm -hmm. and now they're trying to move back into the primary grades in our elementary schools. And in some ways, I feel like that is, um, I don't know, I, I guess I can imagine it'd be less of a transition. I'm remembering my elementary school yeah. report cards, and they were less on, <laughs> on a 1 to 100 and more on, you know, how are you doing across this range of, of uh, skills. So how do you see this, you know, since you're working with that younger group, you've got experience high school can you imagine how, how this could be deployed for primary school um, I can definitely I think that if we start in primary schools that um, especially the kindergarten that's gonna be less of a transition once we get to high school our school is already on um, we do a one through four from K through eight so it's it wouldn't be a huge jump for Fairfax personally but I just think that if we integrate that kind of growth mindset and the maybe you're not proficient yet but you're really close and we start that at such a young age then that's going to be the mindset all the way through high school and we'll be able to see more student advocacy and more growth as learners and maybe more um, sole focus on what people like what students personally are interested in and more self-reflection so that would be something that I would really like Oh, oh, yeah, I was going to uh, um, yeah. share a little bit about my own sort of personal successes with proficiencies. Oh, so um, I started high school with what I think was a pretty unhealthy relationship with the idea of success. Um, and I think that this was largely due to a, um, a, one, a 1 through 100, you know, average-based education system. I, um, I was constantly, you know, calculating in my head, well, you know, if I fail this test, then that'll bring my grade down to this. Or if I take this risk on an assignment and the teacher doesn't like it, gives me a bad grade, then that'll bring my average down. And I don't say this as hyperbole. I had, like, bookmarked on my class Chromebook a little Roger Hub final grade calculator where I was plugging my things in. And I think this notion of numeric success doesn't foster good learning whatsoever. I was, because of this, I was really afraid to take risks. I was really afraid to make mistakes. And I think, as all of you can agree, that's where some of the best learning in life comes from, is from taking risks and making mistakes and learning from those. Um, yet, an average-based 1 through 100 educational system um, punishes students for this, right? It, it brings their average down if they make a mistake. It doesn't let them learn from it. Yet, um, I think my, my experience with proficiency-based learning has been really different. I think I've, um, you know, I've grown to have, yeah, complete, well, I still push myself towards success. I, I think I have a really different notion of what that looks like. I feel a lot more comfortable taking risks in my assignments, which I think has um, resulted in the best work I've done. It's, I feel a lot more comfortable making mistakes and learning from those mistakes. Um, because of proficiencies, I've had opportunities to learn in really fantastic ways outside of the classroom. I've, um, I, last year, I reached my English proficiencies by um, taking a class with um, What's the Story of Vermont, which um, works with um, which works with the Bradley School of English. So, to reach my English proficiencies, I was traveling around the state, interviewing people about food waste and food insecurity and how those issues are linked in Vermont, and I helped produce a documentary about that. And I would argue that that um, is far more relevant to a lot of learners than maybe sitting in an English class and reading Shakespeare. Well, that can be relevant to some, and that should now be valued. Now, don't bad mouth Shakespeare. I am not going <laughs> to See, it is, it, it is really important for some. They should be able to do that. But there should also be opportunities for that. And that all comes from proficiencies. And also, I'd like to say that I'm not alone in my support. Um, for the past two years, I've worked with Up for Learning as a part of a communicating school redesign team. Um, and it's a small group of students and teachers um, working on easing our school shift, easing those anxieties around proficiency-based learning. Um, yeah, so we've had um, parent meetings. We've met with each grade individually. And I think those teams are really only small by design. Um, in fact, last year, we had, were pretty much tasked with designing a whole new team um, uh, just because of people going on to college or taking advantage of the early college program. Um, which is aided by Act 77. Um, and when we were doing this, we unfortunately had to you know, turn away over half of the applicants. There are plenty of students out there who are really excited and really willing to do the work um, because they, they see this change as something which is really important, not only to them, but to the students around them. Um, 
I think that we really do need to have yeah education that looks as as unique as each student and can form to each student because it's only through this through this um, this equality and learning this that I mean okay so if we have s schools where students are feeling anxious and terrified of learning that's that's not right because education is so vital it's where students learn not only the, the information that they will use in their lives but where they can also develop really really destructive mindsets and constructs around learning um, which will only enforce you know power dynamics which are already present and will enforce issues that we're facing such as generational poverty so I think it's really important that we have schools where every student can be successful so that's my little <laughs> are you aware of any students that have really struggled with this? I think there, personally, I have seen students that have struggled with this, but from my point of view, it hasn't been a struggle like to fit into the system. It's been to accept the system and kind of open up the mindset to move away from the traditional based grading, especially if that's how we've been graded our whole life. Going back to that, if we transfer proficiencies to maybe the primary level, that'll be kind of the norm. But I have seen some of my peers and some um, other students in my school struggle with just accepting the system of you're not going to get an A or a B, or you're not going to say, oh, yep, you aced this assignment. There is going to be feedback. There is going to be, it's going to be a process for you to make progress as a learner. So I think it's more just accepting um, the mindset of proficiencies, and that's kind of been a lot of our work. Yeah, and I know me personally, I was like that, oh, I need to get a four or an extended to equal like an A at the very beginning of my, my sophomore year. And I had a hard time accepting the fact that like this is what I had to transfer over to. And now I have like, I feel like I push myself more to get those like extended pieces or to um, take the teacher's feedback instead yeah. of just reading it. Like getting um, A before I would see feedback and be like, oh, I already got the grade I need. I don't really need to look at this. And now even if I get the extended, I'm still looking at the, um, the feedback that my teacher was giving, how can I grow next time? And how, how can I set the bar higher for myself as a learner? Yeah, I think that's really the key piece is, is I haven't seen anyone struggle with proficiencies themselves, simply the mindsets. I mean, on the inverse, I've seen, you know, good friends of mine who are, you know, classified as the, the under-motivated student, all those really negative terms that can surround a student, um, simply because of the system, I mean, he was told again and again and again that he he wasn't successful. Just on that report card, seeing those failing grades, it's it's brutal. Like, there's no way around that. It's brutal to see that. But um, now, I think he's you know been given the opportunities to see where he, where there's room for growth, rather than saying you need to grow. He's, he's shown how he needs to grow. And next year, I, he's going to college. He's um, studying business. Like he's. I think he's had a lot of success with that, and that's the student who we would typically see as struggling or as under-motivated, and that's, so that for me, I think is kind of enough right there. <laughs> Thank you. This is a bachelor. Proficiency. Um, is it more involved with your teachers than it was with the ABC? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually get more of a chance to do a one-on-one -on -one or what have you. Seems to me that would be fantastic. Certainly, I mean. Give you a better idea. I would imagine it's a little harder for the teachers. Yeah, that's definitely um, more work for the teachers, but I feel um, the transformative proficiencies has built better relationships with the teachers for me, because when I get um, a proficiency that I might not be happy with, I can talk to them one-on-one -on -one and be like, how can I grow? Whereas before it was like, oh, I got an 80, this is like what it is. And um, also I think it's opened the door for more feedback. I think it's a really um, amazing life skill to be able to take feedback and be able to use and apply feedback. And I like how it's more of a like case-to-case -case basis. Before it was like, you had an 80, this is what you need to get to get like a 90 or 91, but now it's like, this is what you need to do on your piece to like grow yourself. And I feel like that's definitely something that's really important because not everyone is able to do the same thing. And that's always something we have to keep in mind. I'm step out of the room, but Representative Cooper will be. And while there is, I think, more work um, for teachers and also for students in some ways um, to be able to advocate for themselves. It's also, um, so for example, at my school, we have every single day we have a period. 
um, which is right before lunch. It's um, an hour period like anything else in the day, but it's students are in charge of, um, of scheduling their own time so they can go back and see any teacher that they that they please. Teachers can also call students back into their room. And that's really time for, for the work to happen, whether that be with the work of revision callbacks, whether that's supplemental work to demonstrate proficiencies. So while there is some of that extra work, there's also um, systems in place that, that accommodate that and really support that extra learning. Representative Matos. So you're going through proficiency-based grading through high school. Are you concerned about when you go to college, if that reverts back to a zero to 100 score, how that's going to affect mm -hmm. your learning? Um, I'm not personally concerned because I feel like my mindset is going to be healthier, kind of what Aiden was speaking about. Instead of looking at my grades like, okay, I need to get this on my calculus test so that my grade doesn't drop, or I need to get this number on the next English paper, I feel like I'm going to have a healthier mindset of how can I grow, like looking at assignments not as a, I got a number grade, oh, well, I'll do better next time, or oh, I did awesome, like maybe I don't need to try as hard, where I feel like I'm going to have a healthier mindset to grow myself as a learner and look at um, opportunities as challenges. And I feel like with proficiencies, I've been like very motivated to get things done and to grow. And I think going back to the zero to 100, I'm still going to be as motivated to just reach to my full potential. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really about, yeah, fostering those, those good mindsets around learning. I don't think we should necessarily be looking at high school as, like, this idea of, like, college light where you're doing college, but just on a smaller scale. I think it's really about um, giving students the room and the opportunities to grow and to become successful learners, and I think that will transfer. And there are also plenty of opportunities um, for, for students to exist in that environment should they choose. I'm, um, I've been able to take you know, two dual enrollment classes where it is one through 100. And, mm -hmm. and you can't have those things side by side, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that it also will benefit students who maybe don't choose to go to college. And I believe that proficiency learning isn't just about how you're learning, but also a whole mindset change in how you approach challenges that might be outside of school, too. Um, I coach youth cheerleading. And I feel like when I'm presented with a problem with my team, whether it be in the team dynamic, in a routine, I approach those problems with more of a growth mindset than what I would have before. So I that proficiencies teach life skills also. Um, just being a former guidance counselor, mm -hmm. I my sense is that you three would do well with grades or proficiency yeah. based. You're motivated. Mm -hmm. My sense is you stay and do homework, you study, mm -hmm. I mean to you know say I want to do better or whatever. I mean but there's a third of your class that I don't think thinks that way or mm -hmm. behaves that way or you know, is motivated. I don't, you know, and yeah. those are the kids. I'm not worried about kids like you. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I just think we have to get out of your way in a way in, in school systems. But I am worried about the kids that, you know, they're fine with the one. They don't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and I think what I'm hoping with proficiency-based learning is I'd love to hear from those kids too. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, having worked with Lindsay, I mean, I, if I hadn't worked with Lindsay, I. I've seen her work with those kids, and I've seen them be incredibly motivated and engaged and have a voice. You know, so I do know it works. Um, but I, I, you know, like when you were saying, well, I, you know, I, I would have been in a math or a history class. Well, I want you in a math and a history class because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you graduate. And if you want to be a scientist mm -hmm. instead of a kindergarten teacher, you have the skills for that. Yeah. So. That, you know, that's kind of my questions about it, is does it reach the kids, too, that are not motivated mm -hmm. and not, don't delay gratification, you know, they don't study, they, they're not involved in school, so that, that's my concern. I think those are all really valid concerns. I think we've had, um, we have a few kids in our grade that struggle to sit in the classroom and kind of do the whole zero through one, and they're like, do the work, and they've got the opportunity to go to, like, uh, tech schools. So they've had those more like hands-on experiences mm -hmm. and that works for some people and they get the whole that teaches you the life skills while you're learning things about school and so i think there are opportunities like that that can really help the under motivated and, yeah. and more yeah. yeah and equity is one of the driving principles of proficiency-based learning i mean it's it's not just about serving serving the students who who would do well regardless, right? It's really about it's about reaching those students who are who are viewed as under motivated, under motivated. Because I think 
we really ask, need to ask why they're under-motivated? Mm -hmm. Is it because that's some innate thing in them where they just don't want to do the work? No, that's that's not it. I think it's really just that they've they've been told that they can that they can again and again, and that's that's going to be really destructive. So I think it's really about allowing the students to do the work and allowing them, giving them the opportunities and looking at, well, maybe they're just under-motivated because they're not passionate about what they're doing. So what, they can, what can they be passionate about? And it is those, those opportunities outside of school, whether it's pursuing something technical, whether it's going and doing this alternative lo learning program where they're still reaching the same proficiencies, they're just doing it in a way which is relevant and exciting to them. So I think there's it's given a lot more opportunities for those under-motivated students. And I feel like those opportunities can still integrate the core, like what math and what history. And at the end of the day, yes, you still might need to take the, some of those courses to kind of fill the gaps and the other experiences that you've had. But hopefully with proficiency-based learning, we can open up the door to serve all students and not just the students who are highly motivated. And I think there's different pathways for that to happen. Do you have any other questions from the committee? Thank you all Thank very you much. So Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 The only question I would have is, can I bring all three of you to our school? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that to the teachers. We hope to see you at 4 o'clock at the Capitol Plaza. We have, um, it looks like uh, around 100 people coming wow. to cool. tell you the success stories and acknowledge the challenges but affirm the path. Um, and look at proficiencies in the fullness of proficiency-based learning, of many dimensions of learning that are changing and moving all simultaneously to, to tell an incredible story of Vermont. So please come over at 4 o'clock and... Uh, refreshments. And refreshments will be <laughs> um, And it's in the ballroom. Because we outgrew the Montpelier yeah. room. So oh, it's oh, at the Montpelier room or in the ballroom. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. So Thank much. you.